In this video, we're going over the history of some of the rare mounts in Vanilla WoW. Mounts that people knew about, but were very difficult to obtain for one reason or another. First up, we have the Winter Spring Frost Saber. This was a mount only available to Alliance players, and simply required you to grind out the reputation known as the Winter Saber Trainers. There were only two NPCs in the game associated to this rep, and only one of them would actually talk to you or did anything. So in Winter Spring, you could talk to an NPC known as River and Frostwind, who would give you a quest to go kill some bears and chimera in the nearby area. And after you completed it, you would get around 50 rep. And then the quest would turn to be repeatable, so you could do it over and over again to get more reputation. After a bit of rep, you unlocked another quest which would ask you to kill some Furbolg, that would then also become repeatable after you completed it, giving another avenue for 50 more rep per completion. And then once you had honored, you'd unlock the last repeatable quest, the Rampaging Giants, which had you go out and kill around 8 elite giants in the area, for a total of 75 rep, which generally wasn't worth it compared to the other two quests. And because the only way to get rep was through these three repeatable quests, they would take the average non-human 840 quest completions before you got exalted. Or 746 if you included the giant quests as well. And we're talking about vanilla WoW quests with low drop chances and spawn rates, and of course actually hard elite mobs, so doing 840 of these was kind of insane. And at the end of it, it would simply unlock the vendor which would allow you to purchase the Frost Saber for 900 gold. But at least it was an epic mount that could be used with the basic training, so it could save you some gold on a mount if you didn't want to unlock epic training. The only reason this mount was rare was because it was hard to obtain, and because it was alliance only. In the Burning Crusade, when Blood Elves were added to the game, they weren't initially hostile to this NPC, and could talk to it in order to get neutral reputation, although they still couldn't accept or do any of the quests for them, so that never went anywhere beyond that. And eventually this little bug was fixed and they had the reputation removed. They also greatly increased the amount of reputation you gained from this in the Burning Crusade by a magnitude of five times, so you only had to complete a measly 168 quests in order to get exalted, which is still a lot. In Cataclysm, they removed the old method for how to obtain this mount, and instead added a much more simple daily quest system, where you do a series of 20 dailies in order to get it instead. And then they finally added a horde equivalent in Wrath of the Lich King, which was an Ungoro Crater and awarded a Raptor instead. And if you complete either of these quests in Retail WoW, you'll be given the other one on the opposite faction, so you don't need to unlock both of them. Next up, we have the Unarmored Class Epic Mounts. Before patch 1.4, every race except the undead who had the option to buy the 100% speed epic mounts only had the option to buy different colored versions of their normal 60% speed mounts. And since patch 1.4 was only 5 months into the launch of the game, there were not a lot of people who were able to actually obtain the epic mounts yet. Because you see, in early vanilla, mounts didn't really have training, and instead were just items that had level requirements on them. So if you had a mount, you could just use it. And in order to purchase the epic mounts, they cost 1,000 gold, which is equivalent to around half a million gold in retail's currency. So being able to farm that out within the first five months was not something a lot of people did. In fact, most people didn't even make it to max level within that time, let alone also farm out the equivalent to half a million gold. So the amount of people who actually owned one of the unarmored versions was very small. Made even smaller by the fact that when they did introduce the armored versions of the mount to the game, they added the option to trade in the old ones for the new ones. So a lot of people traded in their very rare color variations for the new, better looking armored ones, without knowing they were trading away future rare mounts. The only races it didn't really apply to were the undead, because they were already given armored versions of their epic mounts from the beginning for some reason. And that's probably why they decided to slap armor on the rest of the mounts as well, to kind of copy the undead. And now we'll go into the raid drop mounts. First up we have the ZG mounts, the Swift Razashi Raptor and the Swift Zulian Tiger. Both of these mounts had about a 1% drop chance from ZG, which was a 20 man raid. These were the first rare boss drops in the game, something they'll do once in a while to this day. As in Cataclysm they would start mixing in some guaranteed boss drops from doing hard tasks, then change to 1% later on. Mounts were very rare and few and far in between in vanilla. Finding a way to get a mount without paying the normal fee at a vendor was a huge benefit, so having them be a low drop chance from a raid made them an extra special reward. So there was already a 1 in 100 chance of getting them from a kill on a boss associated to the two mounts, but you also had to win a roll against 20 other people who probably never seen them drop either. 
assuming the raid leader didn't just ninja loot the mount, or you weren't in a raid where the officers had the mounts in reserve for themselves. So you just had to be really lucky in order to obtain these mounts. And they were made even rarer once they removed them from the game in Cataclysm, when they revamped that raid zone as a dungeon. And for one of the other drop chance mounts, we have the Death Charger's Reigns from Stratholm, which had an even lower drop chance than the ZG mounts, with most people speculating that it had around a 0.2% drop chance, which was later buffed in WoW to a 1% drop chance in Wrath of the Lich King. In order to get the mount, all you had to do was go to the dungeon in Stratholm and kill the last boss, Lord Arius Rivendare, and get very lucky by winning a roll against 4 to 9 other people, since dungeons weren't capped at 5 people back then. Probably a big reason for this mount's much lower drop chance was because it dropped from a dungeon rather than a raid, and it's much easier to farm a dungeon over and over than it is a raid for the simple facts that dungeons require less people to complete, and could be completed multiple times a day instead of once a week. So it kind of made sense in that regard. The mount itself was just a different color of the Forsaken Epic Racial Mount, so it was one of the few ways for Alliance players to ride around on the skeletal horse. And for a time, this mount was even one of the rarest items in the game, period. Next, we'll talk about the legendary mount, the Black Karaji Battle Tank. This mount was only obtainable for about 10 hours after the launch of the AQ-40 event, which required a person to complete one of the longest quest chains in the game's history, that was also one of the hardest quest chains to complete in the game's history. And then ring the gong after the whole server came together and donated enough materials to start the event. Since the quest chain was so difficult to complete and basically required an entire guild funneling all their resources into one player, the amount of people who were able to actually complete the quest before the very limited 10 hour duration was very small. Which is why even to this day, the Black Karaji Battle Tank is still one of the rarest mounts in the game's history. There are other colors of this mount that will drop that are much easier to get inside of the AQ-40 raid. So it is actually pretty easy to get a Karaji mount. The only advantage the Black Battle Tank had over the others was being usable outside of the instance, which actually kind of made the ability a little bit buggy. No pun intended. You see, the mount allowed you to start casting it while you were still in combat, but wouldn't actually mount you up if you were still in combat by the time it finished casting. Which didn't really give you much of an advantage, but was a distinction that wasn't shared by any other mounts until that was fixed. There was also a really minor bug in patch 2.2, where if a character logged out while they were on the mount when that patch went live, they would log in to find their character transformed into a flying wasp. This was only a one-time occurrence though, as the buff wasn't available by any other means and simply went away if you clicked it off or mounted up again. This might have been an intentional internal thing, as on the PTR for Wrath of the Lich King's launch, the Black Karaji battle tank had a tooltip change which roughly said that the mount would change depending on your writing skill and location, and if tested in locations that allowed you to fly, the mount would turn into a wasp and allow you to fly in that way, although this functionality was removed before the patch released. And currently, the mount is still a ground mount which can't actually fly. And also, it was possible for people to obtain the mount in Wrath of the Lich King. When Blizzard opened up a couple of new servers, these fresh servers never had their gates opened in AQ40. So players would rush to complete the quest as quickly as possible in order to obtain this incredibly rare mount. And now, we'll talk about possibly one of the rarest mounts in the game's history, but, you know, actually which is probably not in the game anymore, and that's the fluorescent green Meccano Strider. This was an alt color of the Meccano Strider mount that gnomes received, which wasn't available to players in the game, but was a model in the game's files. One day, a player had a problem with his mount and messaged a GM about it, who sent him a replacement and accidentally sent him this alt color version, which wasn't supposed to be available to players. The player was allowed to keep the mount though, and was the only person in the game who had it and you can't really beat a rare mount that only one person total has. Way later on down the road, the mount was removed from the character's collection sheet, like more than 10 years after, but we don't actually know the exact reason why. There's lots of speculations and rumors online though, that the person who owned the account tried to sell it during Warlords of Draenor on a WoW cheating site, and the tagline that he had was having the rarest mount in the game on his account, so Blizzard removed it from his collection. Now, I have no confirmation for this, I have looked into it pretty extensively, and it seems to be exclusively a rumor with no evidence other than other people and websites talking about the same rumors. But it's a very popular one. Whatever the case, it seems like the player who owned the mount no longer plays the game, so you'll probably never see it in-game unless they add the mount to the game later on in some other fashion. Next up, we have the Riding Turtle. 
This was a TCG loot card added to the game during Vanilla WoW, even though most of the other more famous TCG loot mounts were added during the Burning Crusade. And what the Riding Turtle did was simply allow you to mount up on a mount that didn't actually increase your running speed. In fact, it was slower on most occasions, since it used mount speed modifiers to move. So if you had any way to increase your speed while running, it wouldn't work on the mount. Although if you had a way to increase your mount speed, they would work on it. Since it was one of the earliest, if not the first, TCG loot card mount added to the game, when you typed in the code for the loot card to get the mount, you would only get on that one character on one server. So you wouldn't get on all of your characters until they added account-wide mounts in Mist of Pandaria. The turtle didn't actually increase your swim speed until Wrath of the Lich King, when they added the aquatic mount system to the game with the sea turtle being an obtainable mount. Although they didn't really increase your swim speed as much as they do today, as they didn't get a buff to the swim speed until Legion. But at least it was slightly more useful than just a mount that didn't actually increase your movement or swim speed at all, and was purely a vanity item that you could ride around in town for looks. Especially with how rare it was because it sold out so quickly, and you could only have it on a single character. The mount was also a white item when it was first introduced to the game, so if you accidentally deleted the item, it wouldn't give you a confirmation if you wanted to delete it or not, since the protection only applied to blue or higher items until the Burning Crusade when the item was properly changed to an epic quality item. Now, let's talk about the Reigns of the Bengal Tiger. This was a very popular mount rumor that was never actually added to the game, but did appear in the alpha and was already coded and good to go in the game files. The Bengal Tiger mount rumor basically stated that you could get the mount in the actual game by doing some wall hopping in Stranglethorn Vale to get to the hidden cave, where a female vendor would sell you the mount. Many people did the wall jumping required to get to this cave, but it was always empty. There was speculation that the vendor was on a one month respawn timer, or that only one person per realm could buy from it, but no one ever saw her because she never existed. What made the rumors more credible was there was actual in-game screenshots of the mount. According to some comment threads online, the mount was given to all players in one of the early alpha or beta builds so they could get around quicker, which is where most of the screenshots of the mountain game came from and then later on they all came from private servers. But just like the famous Ashbringer rumors, the in-game rumors never went anywhere. But exactly like the Ashbringer rumors, Blizzard did put a nod to the rumors in-game eventually. With the revamp of the old zones, Blizzard added a quest to the game that actually sends you to this cave, and then you get a cat pet as a reward. Not exactly a mount, but close enough. Another thing to note about the Bengal Tiger mount if you look at which races can use it, it includes all of the vanilla races except the Torrens. This really shows you how early on in the alpha the mount was scrapped, since back then, Torrens were going to be given an ability to run as fast as mounts rather than given any actual mounts to ride. But Blizzard eventually decided to scrap that idea and gave Torrens the ability to ride mounts. But not before they scrapped the Bengal Tiger mount, apparently. I recall an email that we got from Chris Metzen. Chris was incensed about something he had seen in some promotional materials where one of the designers had put a night elf on an orange tiger mount. Chris lost it. He was like, night elves should be on dark tigers only, black tigers, purple tigers, but never, ever, ever should a night elf be found on an orange tiger. So uh, Rob, emailed us all and reminded us that Night Elves could only be riding on approved Tiger Palette mounts. Alright, and with that, that's all of the rare mounts from Vanilla WoW. In Vanilla WoW, mounts themselves were not easy to come by, and most players only had one mount total, so there was no such thing as a huge mount collection like there is today. The average player has hundreds of mounts to choose from, and the average expansion will give you around 50 to 100 new mounts to collect. So the very few mounts you could obtain outside of your racial mounts or farming out other racial mounts, were all pretty rare. Excluding the PvP mounts, which I didn't talk about, because they technically weren't that rare. And as always, if you have any ideas for future history of videos just like this one, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments. This video was edited by Felplay. And also, did you know, only 39.2% of people who watch these videos are actually subscribed to the channel?